Hi Rafaela, thank you for coming to my channel. For uh, people who is new in my channel, I live in Australia and uh, Rafaela lives in Australia too and a lot of you guys ask me all the time how is the life here, how is everything in a daily life in Australia. So that's the reason why I decided to invite um, Rafaela to my channel. So she's gonna explain a little bit of how is her life here. She's from Brazil, so welcome to my channel. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> okay. I'll try. No, I'll it's try. fine. <laughs> um, so first question: For how long have you been living here in Australia? You live in Sydney, right? Yeah, I live in Sydney. Uh, I've been living here for almost eight months now. Got here in the end of August 2019. Yeah. And in Sydney and in the city. I've been living in the city all this time because I study here and I work here, so it's easier to live uh, near. Yeah. Like where well, I work and study. I'm just going to put you a bit on context, you guys who are watching this video. So I know Rafaela because she works with my sister. So my sister works in a really nice uh, company. Uh, the name is Maryville. So they own a lot of the restaurants, pubs, cafes around Sydney. And the girls work together. So they live in the CBD area. And okay, so you're from Brazil. So when did you decide to travel? Like how was the whole process when do you say you know i want to use to I, travel yeah uh it wasn't a hard decision because i think uh people that live in a, in a tropical country like brazil or south america kind of in, in general if they if they choose a country to live australia is maybe top five yeah so climate i think it's one of the most important things and when I, when I, well, uh, so I'm gonna say from the beginning, yeah. I, was, I was married before, and my dream was always coming uh, to Australia, but uh, we didn't have money to come, uh, both of us. Yeah. When, when you're married, or both come, or nobody comes. Yeah. So I got divorced, and then. Uh, I made a decision like uh, now is the time because I always wanted to come here and I had to kind of hold that dream uh, to have a marriage life because the, uh, your, your, your priorities, my priorities like change, uh, building a family and I have one to support family and yeah. my house apart and be at a job because maybe uh, I was going, uh, we were planning having a, a kid, so, and then when I got divorced, I didn't have, uh, I, I didn't have anything that hold me to Brazil. Yeah. So I said, like, now, now is the time, because I'm 31. Yeah. And, uh, I'm that old. <laughs> I'm 26, I'm really close to to you, so it's fine. <laughs> yeah. So in my life, like, like that, that's, that's the story. And then I chose Australia because, mainly because of the beaches and the climate and this thing, but that you can get to know lots of places in only one city or one state because Sydney is really big, uh, New South Wales is huge, Australia is huge, so in one country, you can travel like to lots of, and get to know lots of places without having to live the place. That's one of the reasons I chose to be here too. So you, when you travel to Australia, you come here completely alone, like by yourself, right? Without knowing anybody, I, I didn't have friends here, family, like no one, literally no one. Yeah. Like, and it's really hard. Yeah, it's really hard to start a new life. So, what do you think was your biggest challenge here? Like, what do you think? Like, oh, you know, now that I have been live, living here for months, I think the hardest part was I don't know the culture, the language, the start a new life. What do you think was the hardest part for you? Actually, um, 
the cha- uh, the challenge for me is it was finding a job actually because yeah. in Brazil be a teacher. I have been working for the same school for the past ten years. Okay. And I I used to know how to speak English already, so the language barrier wasn't something that was uh, a concern. So that's good because that's an advantage. Not, not very good, but I. Yeah. Not very good. <laughs> Yeah, probably that's one of the uh, biggest challenge for probably everyone who arrived to a new country because you need to start, okay, where I'm going to work now, where I'm going to start uh, trying to get, you know, like some money because yeah. as soon as you arrive, everything is like really, really nice and yeah. you would like to stay here just like on a holidays, you know, going to yes. the beaches all day and everything, but then it's like, yeah. okay, no, this is life and I need money and living in Australia is really expensive, uh, yeah. so definitely you need to think where do you want to work or where you can work because it's not only when you want, as you said, sometimes you exactly. need to be a bit flexible and see where uh, is yeah. the best place when you can work and get some yeah. money so you have, to, you have to think that uh, people that decide coming here they have to think like they are they will be completely out of their comfort zone yeah so when i talk to my friends i usually advise them at least uh choose a country or a place that they have something in common to not be like completely out because for example i came here speaking English already so yeah Maria wasn't a problem uh, I used to live alone in Brazil uh, I have my family I have a big family we were always together but I have I have my house and my job and my car so I was yeah in Brazil so that was uh, wasn't out of my com- my comfort zone coming alone because I used to be by myself yeah uh, so uh, my advice is uh, if you if you're not like you know, acquainted with the place you're going, the language or the professional area, please make your country that yeah. there's related to something you are comfortable with. Yeah, hundred percent. I I always say that as soon as you move to Australia you need to think out of the box because definitely you need to be more flexible with everything. Yeah. yeah. So when you um, arrived here to Australia, you were holding what kind of visa? Like a tur- student visa. Student visa. Yes. Yeah. I, and did you already I, I, extend it, or are you gonna plan to extend your visa? Or that's the plan. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, to come here, uh, we don't have working holiday visa in Brazil. Yes, I'm as we Colombians. Don't we don't have. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, I think only Chile and Argentina, but, uh, but, but I'm not sure. I yeah, I think it's Chile, Argentina, and Peru, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. And then uh, I, used, I used to know how to speak English already, and, but as my intention is to uh, stay here, work here, and improve my English, I decided to come uh, to study English. I booked for one year. Yeah. And I thought it, usually when people book, used to book uh, English courses, it's one year or more, babe, maybe. And then when I got here, I discovered it's not like this. Usually they book for four, six, eight months tops. Yeah. Uh, and I booked for 12 months, so it's a long time. Yeah. But uh, as I in, 
attend to extend my visa because I, I want to take a course in my, my professional area. Yeah. It, it's, it will be fine for me to stay 12 months to be in English. I've been proving a lot of things. Yeah. Okay. Well, your English is pretty good so far. So, oh, thinking first that you're gonna get uh, the visa yeah. and then you can continue uh, yeah. with your plan as the yeah. way you are thinking about it. All right. So, what another question that I would like to ask you when you li used to live in Brazil, you said that mm -hmm. you live alone, but anyway, the culture here is just completely different. So, what things do you like about uh, like the Australian culture, and what things do you think like you know I'm not quite like comfortable with this, or I don't know. Uh, actually, it's, uh, I think it's easier to say that the things I like more. I don't think there is something I don't really like that I, I, I maybe. I'm used to them already because the place I work at are lots of Australian, yeah. European, uh, at school more more South American people because we study English. So, um, but I don't think there is something that I don't really really well, like. Yeah. Uh, the, just the thing that it took me a while to get used to it, and I, I don't think that I, I am used to it uh, yet is the transportation. And uh, the 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 way they drive, like, cause here it's uh, <laughs> I don't know how, how they say it's it's the opposite side. Yes, yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, it's an English it's, uh, an English way to drive, so they drive like in the the, the last Yeah, time. they they have a lot of influence from the British. So uh, one thing that I, I thought it was really really hard for me to get used to, they do that walking on the street. It's not only uh, in your cars when they drive. Yeah. When you walk on the street, you have to stay in the left side of the sidewalk. Yeah. And going, and then when people are coming, they have to stay on the right. Uh, yeah. The I know. The same I know what you mean. I was like, people were like stopping in front of me, and we were going like, oh no, wait, oh my god, what's going on? Yeah. Sometimes I still do that. I'm, I'm walking like in the middle. It's a bit confusing. I know what you mean. Yeah. I have to go to the other side, and then I move to the other side. That's really, really weird. It's a bit weird. I know what you mean. Like my parents were, uh, they came here like a two weeks ago or something like that. They, um, oh well, you met them, and yeah. yeah, and when they were here, they were like a really shocked. And one of the things that they were shocked, it was that when you drive and even when you walk, because everything is literally to the opposite side. Oh, so yeah. even when you're walking, you can tell when someone is uh, from overseas or a foreigner because they're walking to the right. So it's quite funny. It happened to me too a lot at the beginning. I just couldn't get used to, uh, probably took me one month no I, yeah. no until today it's been eight months and I'm still confused. <laughs> there was i remember that uh, the, my first month there was one time that i was at the bus stop alone and i was waiting for the bus like looking at one direction and then the bus came like the other direction and i was looking at the other but, uh, okay it's, yeah I at the wrong way i have to look here and because the buses were coming from this way it was Stupid. Talking about the public, like a transport here, I have never been before in Brazil. How is like uh, the difference, you know, from what part of Brazil are you from? Like, uh, yeah, I'm, so from, I'm from Sao Paulo, I'm from the capital. So it's pretty Paulo. big and I heard that it's like a really like a messy, it's like classic yeah. capital city. Like uh, when no, you yeah, compare yeah. With Sydney, even though that Sydney is not the capital, is definitely big and it's quite a messy. Mm -hmm. Can you tell anyway, like a difference in that aspect? Do you think that yeah. you can compare both of them? Yeah, I think uh, the the transportation system here. Uh, I think it, I hear some people say that it's, they don't like, but in 
my opinion, I think it's really organized that people are organized. Yeah. When we have to get in uh, the bus or the train, everybody stops and wait for everybody to come out, to start coming in. And in Brazil, it's like everybody coming in and coming out like at the same time and um, nobody waits uh, for anybody. So it's kind of uh, messy and yeah. rude. Yeah. And here, uh, it, it's, I think it's, it's much better because people, the, the, because the people are organized. Yeah, I think it's the, the culture. The transportation system, I think it's the same. Here, it's, I think it's a little better uh, because there are more train stations and uh, this is more, more, more stable and more, I think the subway, uh, the kilometers are much longer than in Brazil. Like in yeah. Paulo. Paulo. But what I, what I think it's really different is because people have a system here, you know, and everybody follows the system. You have yeah. to wait. Do everybody comes out and everybody waits. There's like not even one person that comes in front of you. To take yeah, place. yeah. Everybody. That's that's the main the main difference. And then, but it's like uh, in Sao Paulo, there are, I think it's 22 million people owning the capital. So uh-huh. it's it's harder to be more organized when you have so many people. Yeah. So you get into one bus here. You can do that because like I think not even half of people no yeah I think it's like five million or something yeah. like that it's like a, nothing if you compare it to South America to our countries like Bogota is a tiny tiny place compared to Sydney and yeah. we literally are like a double in population yes. and it's similar or I would say pretty much the same uh, yeah. to Brazil like where you yeah. that's what I can like I say, or I can imagine, um, because in Bogota and in Colombia in general, it's pretty much the, the same. So people do not respect others. They don't respect if yeah. there is an older waiting for the chair or if a uh, exactly. girl is pregnant or something, they don't care. Like uh, obviously yeah. you might see sometimes people who may offer you the chair, but yeah. not everyone and it's really messy as you yeah. said they don't respect so if the yeah. buses stop people don't even wait to people that end the bus exactly. to go out of course, of course i'm not like generalizing there are so many people that are polite are organized and maybe half or less than half of them are rude and uh do this kind of things but the difference is here everybody I think no. that is part of the culture, as, as you said, people here respect that because they just follow the rules. It's like if they, you they do. do not respect that, you will get a fine or they people get, will react, so yeah, like, hey, respect others or hey, wait uh, to everyone to go out of the bus and you go yeah. in. Uh, so I think probably that's the reason the system really works here. and you follow the system so everything is fine here yeah. and uh, what about like a safety australia it's really safety and i think that's one of the reasons why i will think more than twice definitely to go back to south america because yeah, yeah. you can have so your scary. iphone and you can chat while you're on the bus walking or working out and especially it's for so- girls uh it's not the same like in south america when you feel even afraid because maybe a guy is gonna do something to you so what do you think about it it's it makes me sad actually because yeah it's it's completely different and when i talk to my friends and when i talk to my mom about the security system here and how the security works they they don't even know what I'm saying because it, it seems something so distant from our reality. Yeah. They go like, no, no, that's not possible. That's it. It is. Yeah, it okay. is. For example, um, the the nightclub that we work. Yeah. Most of the time.
clients, we finish our jobs at 2, 3, 4 a.m. Yeah. And I work walking distance from, from my job. It's like uh, 15 minutes, 20 minutes walking talks. So yeah. It, it's really close. And I come home walking. Um, and my parents get written words like, how do you walk in the city? Uh to your house at 4 a.m. and then I, I explain that because nothing happens. Yeah. Nothing ever happens and they don't believe. No, no, but you have to, you have to be safe. You have to, no, I don't because it's, it's, it's completely safe to, to do that because it's something so far away from what we used to. Yeah. So never, ever walk home at 4 a.m. if I live. Uh, maybe maybe in, in some suburbs, okay. Yeah. Uh, but not in the center of the city ever. And one thing that it's it's completely different here. And don't get me the wrong way, but like when you when a bro walks uh, on the street, everybody. How how can I say that? They they look at her. They call her. Sometimes the guys touch us and hold us and. It's it's really scary because they are appro they approach us in so many ways. Sometimes politely, sometimes rude. Most of the times rude. And here you walk. I don't know if they think I'm muddy, <laughs> <laughs> but you walk on the street here, and nobody, the guys don't even look at you. They don't even they say anything look. to you. Yeah. They don't, and when they do, they approach uh, the girls like, hi, excuse me, can I talk to you, uh, are you busy, or can I please have a moment, they, they don't, they, they are not aggressive, they are not rude, Yeah. I, there was a friend that told me a story that a guy from another country, I don't know which country, he did that to a girl who was walking on the street and he stopped her holding her arm, the guy that was with him, Australian, he said it was crazy. Yeah. It's really bad because and he said, no, we don't do that here. Yeah. The, the guy said to the other guy, so, because it's part of their culture, like, leave the girls alone, don't, don't touch them, don't, don't yeah. approach them aggressive, uh, in an aggressive way or in a rude way. And that's completely different from for you we're used to in, in, in Brazil, because Brazil is a very dangerous place. Yeah, a pretty dangerous place for for women. And here, you can you can wear uh, tops. And yeah, wear whatever you sword. want. Yeah, because nobody will touch like a finger on you. That's that's one of the things. In, in the first month, it was the the thing that shocked me the most. But you know, everybody used to look at me and do that. And <laughs> but I know what you mean. Time, yeah, I know what you mean because in and unfortunately, as you said, it's that, like when you think about it, when you realize the situation, how completely different it is from Australia to South America in general, it's just completely different. Like in, in Colombia, it's pretty much the same. You can wear tops, like I'm wearing tops right now, because the guy will be like uh, saying something to you immediately, immediately. And they think that, the girls are gonna feel like um, nice, like as a compliment, and it's like, no, it's exactly. not. You are not telling me a compliment. No. You are intimidating no. me, so shut up and keep and your they, distance. They make us feel bad to wear a little top, like it's my fault. Oh uh, yeah. You are being aggressive or abuse to me because I'm wearing. They make you feel yeah. like you're wrong because you're right. It's no, you can wear whatever you want because we won't touch you. Of course, that maybe have some cases people or people everywhere in the world but it's not part of their culture the, of their as you said it's happen. part of the culture it's just that culture like yeah. uh, you know my partner he's Aussie and he's just culture like when I talk yeah. to him and I explain a little bit he sometimes just can't understand it's just like yeah. like same as wow. for us yeah. When at the beginning uh, everything is like really nice and shocked because everything is perfect. Same, yeah. like the opposite for them when they go to those places. Obviously, there are a lot of beautiful things. Totally better. Yeah.
sorry, I, we were just saying that someone got lots of toilet paper and we are like, how? Because it's impossible to get toilet paper. Sorry, change yeah, the topic. I woke up at 5 a.m. to go to calls here near Toho and we waited in the line for an hour for the toilet paper and we got like two Saturdays ago and then we, we bought uh, two packs, one me and one Fernanda. So, but we have to wake up at 5 a.m. too. So, you, you live with how many flatmates? Changing I the topic now. <laughs> Me, Fernanda, and Joao from Brazil, and Diego from Spain. Oh, okay. Okay, that's good. How do you find living with more people? Because you used to live by yourself. Yeah. When I uh, arrived here, I, I used to live in a student's house for a month in North Sydney. And then I found a place here in the city. Because I had bought in Brazil when I bought the, the package with the school with yeah. tickets, uh, so it was like included in the deal. Yeah. So I, I stayed here for a month and then I moved here to the city and I chose an apartment with seven people. I used to, I used to live with seven people because I had to find a place really fast because I, I could only stay for one month in the place. Yeah. So the renter, and it was really hard because I didn't know anybody. I didn't know how renting a place here works. I didn't know how the process, if it has a call, if uh, they have a contract or I just like talk to a person. So it was kind of, oh, I found this place. I want to keep, I want to, I'll, I'll take it and that's it. And it, it, it was hard. It was really hard. They were really nice people, but one, uh, it was two French, three French, one Brazilian, one Colombian, me, and one Korean girl. There's a lot of people. So, from all over the world, like from Asia, Europe, and America. Yeah. South America. So, uh, the, the habits and the costumes, and it's completely different. The food, especially the food, yeah. uh, it's, it's fun. It's really fun to see like uh, the menu. It's, uh, it's yeah, especially if people from Europe, they have a totally different taste from totally. us. But it's like it, it was okay because I know I knew that would be temporary. Yeah, because I had to move like right away. Like, right away, no, I had like two weeks uh, to find a new place and. It was, it was one that when I moved to Sydney, okay, I'll, I'll have to stay here for two months. That I, there was a contract, like a long term. I had to stay for two months, and then I would have time to find another place as I'll be staying here for a year. I, I wasn't in a rush to find a really nice place to stay, but it ended up to be really good because uh, the privacy. I think it's something that I you get used to it because you know you don't have options. Yeah. For everybody that is watching this video, you know that you're gonna come to Sydney, to Australia in general, and you will live with lots of people. That's a that's a that's a good advice. So if don't you can tell some advice have, to people, yeah, don't think you will have your own place, your own room, for example, especially if you want to come to the city because it's really expensive, expensive, a single room here. So be prepared to live at least like in the beginning with lots of people and people you don't know with completely different culture. Yeah. If you are a uh, crazy cleaner, organized <laughs> like I am, like trying to play cool and just breathe. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, especially for those people that won't be here for so long. As I had one year, I wasn't in a hurry to, to find a, like a really good place to feel comfortable and feel like myself at home because I will have time to do that. So the people that will come here for five months or three or two, it's um, you don't need to get used to it because it's temporary. So you right know? now you're sharing your room with uh, Fernanda. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Now yeah yeah in that, in that place I used to share my room with three other girls. We're four in one room. God. <laughs> yes. They were really nice girls, but the problem is our schedule were completely different. For example, there was a girl that she used to wake up at 5.30 to go to work, 
and I used to come back home from work at 4, 3, 4 a.m. Yeah. So from 3 a.m. to 6 a.m., two people were getting dressed, taking a shower. The other two girls were sleeping. So imagine you're sleeping, and from 3 a.m. to 5 a.m., yeah. people so, yeah. your room. This so gonna interrupt really you, your 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 sleep, and then you're gone. You yeah. can hear at the background all the noise. How yeah. much for me? Because I was the one that was uh, yeah. at home late for them. Yeah, I was trying to be as quiet as possible, but it's hard. You know, end up making. Yeah, and then I I met Fernanda at school, and she was looking for a place too because she was in the same. Uh, situation as me, she, she was living with uh, so many people and she yeah. wanted more private privacy. And we, we got along like straight away because she's Brazilian. Yeah, uh, but yeah, I met like, her just like once, she's, but she's really nice, she's lovely. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and she's uh, in spite of uh, she's really, she's much younger than me, she's I'm 31, she's 19. Uh, we are completely different people, like. Uh, I'm not her mom, <laughs> but pretty <my> much. <laughs> <laughs> but we, we got along because we are from the same place. Yeah, um, the same city. So sharing a room with her is really easy. We have the same schedule because she works for the same company and she gets home late. To we have our moments of privacy because I study in the morning. She has the room for herself during the morning. Yeah. She usually works in the evening. I don't, so I have the room. So also this good routine works so another advice is try to find a place to share a room that has the same schedule as you uh, or completely different one yeah because then when you're at home the person is out when you're out the person yeah. is at home so it kind of works yeah that's good and now changing a little bit and just as uh, as the end of this uh conversation probably we're living in a hard situation right now and now that I saw the girl who was walking with the toilet paper and we're talking about that how is this affecting you because my sister is right now living with me and we're lucky because you know like for people who's new in this channel I live in Canberra and my partner works uh, for the government so that's the reason why we are safe but otherwise, a lot of people are just suffering a lot. <laughs> like suffering is yeah. that we are affected because we don't have where to uh, work right now. Like as a personal trainer, I can't work because all the gyms are closed. And you go to work in, in the uh, pub, in the club, you can work neither because yeah. everything is closed too. Yeah. So what are you doing right now with the rent with the food uh, with everything it's um uh, it's really hard actually because there are two two points to talk about for example uh, in uh, a, a part of a facebook group it's called brazilians in sydney brazilians in sydney yeah yeah and people are talking about they want help from the government that the Australian government should help the students, should help us. Yeah. But when uh, part of our part of our paperwork when we apply for the visa is how do you say that? I don't know how to say that in English. You have to show an amount of money. Yeah, like an evidence that you have enough yes, money to to support yourself. Yeah. Depending on the the time. Yeah, the period here, that so you're going to stay here. Yeah. Yeah. So, for example, if you're going to stay for 12 months, you have to have, I don't remember how, how much now, but it's like, it's some, you have to have this quantity. They, they make the math based on the months you're staying. Yeah. yeah. Uh, to support yourself while you are in Australia. So, it's, it's a mandatory document. If you don't have this income, if you don't have this amount of money in your bank account, you, your visa is denied. Uh, yeah, they are not denied gonna, yeah. right away. Yeah, I don't know how this is working now, but the process, my process, was in the beginning in 2019, so it, it was how it was working there yeah. at that time. And so that's part of the discussion because people are saying, like, 
the government shouldn't help us because we prove to them that we have like yeah. to support ourselves here and there are other people saying no the government should help us uh, because we are living in their country we are working for them we're paying taxes so yeah it's kind of a big argument uh, in, in over the internet but I think it depends on it's it's really singular cases for example in my my uh, in my case, I had money to support myself for a period of time. Yeah. And when that happened, I was saving some money to travel to Asia. I was going to. I was deciding um, if I was going to, if I, if I wanted to go to Bali or Thailand. Yeah. So everybody that comes. Want to go to yeah, because it's pretty close. It is not expensive, so a lot of people yes. save money to go it's to easier. Asia. Yeah, it's easier to come to go to to Asia from Australia than yeah. to go back to Brazil and then. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah, and it's cheaper and it's easier. So, uh, so I had this savings, and so I have this money to support myself probably for the next two months. Um. That was the money that I wasn't planning on using. Yeah. So, because I've been here for only eight months, so I, I don't have, I, I didn't have enough time to save money. Yeah, yet. no, I need time because... because we're, only allowed, we're only allowed to work 20 hours a yeah. week. Oh, and yeah. when, you, when you, your salary, usually it's like 500 to $700 a week. And you pay almost three hundred dollars a rent, so you have to buy food, you have to buy clothes. It's a normal life. Like when you leave here, don't think you're not gonna spend money. Money, yeah. Because it's a normal life. You need to buy food, you need to buy clothes, you need to buy things from for your house. For yeah, personal item, the other one, the shampoo, yes, everything. Yeah, people just think like, ah, oh, I can live with a hundred dollars a week because I just need to buy food. You know, it's. A normal house, a normal life. You need to buy stuff from your house, for example. You need to buy new sheets. You need to buy a pillow. You need to buy stuff for the kitchen, like soap and uh, cleaning products. Yeah. So don't don't rely on uh, just food and that's it. No. Yes. Yeah. When when you work twenty hours a week, you it's don't have. You, sometimes you can you can save like a hundred, a hundred and fifty dollars a week. Uh, that I, I was I was doing, but because I've been here for a while, um, maybe people that are here for less than five months, they're not staying. Everybody, not everybody, but most of people I know, especially that I worked at, I study English, so everybody that studies English just arrived in Australia. They are. Almost all of them are leaving. They're not staying. And the ones yeah. that were uh, planning to extend their visa are not anymore. Yeah. Because they, uh, as they don't have English yet, they used to study English, they used to have jobs that uh, it's not vital. For example, they were working in Uber Eats or cleaners or pubs like me. Yeah. So it's not something that they can rely on their job to stay here and the problem is that we don't know how it's going to get better and if it's going to get better so yeah we don't know for stay. how long it's going to last this and they are the, they are afraid that if they don't go now it's going to get worse and the, there will be no no flights so then they come back home so Maybe I had a friend that he was supposed to go in the end of April, but the company offered him to go last week, and he took it because he took it because he didn't know like if there will be plans for him. Yeah, yeah, it's a really hard situation. Unfortunately, today I was watching actually the news, and here in Australia, a lot of the airlines are saying that they are literally in crisis because yeah. obviously people are afraid to travel and some other countries are not allow yeah. allowing you to arrive to the country for example uh colombians here in australia are asking some help to the government in colombia colombian government 
because uh, they close the border. So it doesn't yeah. matter if you are a citizen, you yeah. literally can't not go into the, into the country. So it's even harder for some people yeah. because you are literally stuck here yeah. and you don't have a job, you don't have money. So yeah. it's a really hard situation for a lot of people right I now. I think people that, are, that have been here for longer, maybe they are um, more not comfortable because nobody is comfortable but they, they they had time to have some savings yeah you know uh, even though it's a too scary because you don't know how long it's gonna take so but they are not as scared as people that are here uh, for a short period of time and they don't have money yet because people think that they are gonna come to Australia and they were gonna work a lot and be rich and that's not true. So if you if you, if you hold a student visa, you're not going to get rich. Okay? I like I like that. So <laughs> talking now that you're saying that uh, some advice to people, what other advice do you think that you can tell people? Sydney is a place. It's in comparison to to Sao Paulo. Uh, the the currency is three times more expensive. So for uh, three dollars, uh, one is one yeah yeah. So yeah, three dollars. It might be yeah. something like yeah, that because yeah. from Colombia is like two and a half or something, something like that. Yeah, and now it's even higher. It's three something. So. Um, it's. I think Sydney, in comparison to Sao Paulo, it's, it's it's even more expensive. It's almost the same, but it's more expensive. Um, the idea for me, the idea is that here you are well paid for the job you do, in spite of in spite of the job you have, even though working twenty hours a week, but. Uh, usually the salary for English students, for example, like you, you get paid like $22, $25. That will be like uh, almost 100 reais in Brazil an hour. Um, so it's a lot. But the problem is that you can work for only 20 hours a week. And it's, trust me when I say it's 20 hours a week. Only if you get a job, they pay cash hands. For example, if you're going to be a, a babysitter, they will pay cash hand and then you can work more than 20 hours. But these jobs that you can rely on, that you have a job and you can count on the money, it's 20 hours and that's it, 20 yeah. hours. So in spite of the fact that you are well paid for one hour, the... the the living here is really expensive. Yeah. Grocery is expensive. Rent is crazy expensive, especially here in cities, really expensive. Yeah. Going out here if you like partying, if you like to drink and smoke, know no. that you're gonna come here and you're gonna quit smoking. Yeah. I'm trying. <laughs> because it's really expensive to smoke uh, the cigarettes here and drinks here. But you have the advantage of my sister, you get a lot of free drinks. Uh, because we are, we are bartenders. <laughs> that might be Don't lie, idea. don't lie, you drink a lot. I, I, okay, I'll try. <laughs> but it's because, yeah, we, we, we work for the company and we have some friends, so yeah. we have a discount. <laughs> for this company that we work yes. the, the venues that belong to this company we have discount so that's a good thing but uh, so it's kind of a, I wouldn't say like a paradox but you, you have a good salary but you spend all your salary in uh, basic things like yes. food or um, groceries and partying it's really <laughs> really hard yeah I like that you said that because a lot of people sometimes are like, oh, but you live in Australia, you have a, a lot of money there. And it's like, yeah, as you're saying, you might get a lot of uh, money because compared to spend. other countries, when yeah. you explain to your friends in Latin America yeah. how much you earn in one hour, they're like, well, that's a lot of money. But then you yeah. say like, yeah, but 
ice, panties, and food, yeah. and rent, and everything. No, it's not a problem. You are in a new country. You want to go out. You want to get to know other places. You want to go uh, to the restaurants. You want to go to the beaches. You want to go to to get to know the places. And this requires money. Because, for example, you, you're going to spend a day at the beach, and then you want to eat in a, not in a restaurant, um, you, you will have to because you're spending the day at the beach. You're not going to go back home to eat and then go back to the place to work. So, because if, if you plan on coming here and stay in your house watching TV, maybe you can save some money because your salary is okay. But if you want to explore the city and the country, you will spend the money you receive. Yeah, I think you need to be really smart and prioritize what you want. So if you go to the beach and you have yeah. a limited budget, well, yeah. grab the sandwich in your yeah. bag and grab that and as a lunch on, instead it, of... It depends on your goal. If you want to come here to make money, okay, but know that you have to stay home to save the money. You won't get to know the places, you won't travel, you won't meet people, you won't explore anything, you're just making money and stay at home. It's okay. If it's your if it's your goal, maybe then you can you can save some money. I have some friends that do that. They, they yeah, that's here. what I'm saying. It really money, depends on the goal. Money to Brazil, because when you send money to Brazil, it's three times more. Yeah. Right? So if you send like a thousand dollars you have three thousand reais. So yes. Yeah. Three times more. So I, I have some friends that came here to do that because Australia is one of the places, I don't know, uh, that allows you to work and study at the same time. So yeah. some people choose to come yeah. here to make money, but you're going to be stuck in your house. But if you really want to uh, go out and get to know places and people and all the beautiful beaches that you have here and eat in a restaurant and go partying, you will spend everything during the week that's what yeah. I yeah it's true I think I'm lucky that I don't like Pia <laughs> you know me you know that I really that I really don't yeah. like to drink because it's really so that's, a, that's, a, that's an advantage uh, I I'm just I don't know I just don't like and, and it, I think it's actually good because as you said uh, drink here in Australia is quite expensive it's like 10 bucks probably just one beer yeah. that's it so if you're yeah. going uh, out with your friends and you drink minimum three or five beers, so you're ready to spend yeah, if, you, if, you, if you go out to 50 or 100 bar, in our night or more. Or work for Marathon that gives you a 15 Yeah, discount. <laughs> That's another good option. I get that. <laughs> <laughs> My boss going to be happy. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for telling us and uh, sharing with us your experience. Um, I know that Australia has a lot of opportunities. It's not easy. Yeah. It's a completely challenge. But in my personal yeah. opinion, I, I definitely will say that it's going to be worth um, it. It's expensive yeah. and you might spend a lot of money. But if you really want to... Uh, you know, have this experience and it, yeah. I don't know, as we just said depends on the goal that people uh, have in like their minds, it will be easier or harder, that really depends on each person but anyway, mm -hmm. thank you so much, again you're welcome <laughs> I say, ob obrigada obrigada oh <laughs> <laughs> thank awesome. you Okay, we'll talk to you later.